welcome back to my channel. This is Jean Castillo and I release videos in which I share my know-hows on the nitty-gritty of English and research. If you want to reinforce your learnings in these topics, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so you wouldn't miss any of my uploads. In this video, I am gonna tackle the various parts of chapter 1 in a quantitative study. So if you are interested, please do watch until the end. Without much ado, let's get the ball rolling. Starting off with the background of the study. This presents the context or the situation that the research is going to address. This part justifies why the researcher needs to investigate the problem. The problem is discussed by providing relevant information such as legal basis, statistics like population and survey results, debates or arguments, and historical, scientific, cultural, or academic developments respectively. It is composed of three to five pages in which the first page does not include a borrowed idea or statement, but in the second to fifth page, it is already acceptable. To wrap up the background of the study, it is better to reiterate the rationale or the reason why it is necessary for the researchers to conduct a study on the chosen topic. After establishing the context and rationale of your research work, let us now proceed to the statement of the problem. The questions to be answered in the research work will be presented in this part. Ideally, this is composed of two sections. The first paragraph will present the general aim of the research, while in the second part, the specific questions are listed. Moving on to the next part, which is the significance of the study. This exhibits the benefits and beneficiaries of the research paper. Written in paragraph form, the beneficiaries are arranged according to the most benefited to the least benefited. In most studies, the first one in line are the respondents themselves, and listed lastly are the future researchers. Further, the researchers must elucidate the benefits of their work in every beneficiary by not limiting their thoughts in one sentence only. Come on! Huwag niyong tipirin! Because this is one way to showcase the would-be contributions of your work once it is successfully done. And now, we have the scope and limitations of the study. In the first paragraph, the scope or the coverage is discussed, including the characteristics of the respondents that made them qualify to partake in the study. Setting or local or kung saan lugar ninyo ikakandak ang study, time frame, kung anong school year, and the like. Moreover, the limitations or the weaknesses and the boundaries of the research work are explained in the second paragraph like the other variables that are related but not measured, and the potential respondents who, for some reasons, could not be part of the data collection. So before we proceed to the next part, let us have an icebreaker. Here is the video presentation of my students dubbed as Pass the Research Tool Challenge.
just a sneak peek of the steps that you need to undergo in order to complete your research work. This time, let us move to the next part which is the theoretical framework. Theories serve as the backbone of research. Hence, researchers should look for one core theory and at least two support theories in which the claims of the research work are anchored on. Forget not to indicate the proponent of the theory and do not just lift all the information from your source. Read the claims of the theory for an X amount of time until you have comprehended everything. Write down the gist of the theories which is relevant for the research. Based on my experience, this is the most difficult part for my students to write. So you really need to extend your patience and your time in order to come up with a good theoretical framework. Next, we have the conceptual framework. Other references include the graphic organizer in this part. However, in our school, it is presented in the next one. Conceptual framework shows the research claims and arguments in a narrative form, guides the researcher to stay on track, and helps the research teacher or advisor and panel of examiners in analyzing the research paper. This is followed by the paradigm of the study. This serves as a blueprint or outline of the research and a graphical representation of the conceptual framework. The variables and the relationship with each other are showcased through the use of lines, arrows, and rectangles or squares. Here is an example for quantitative research. For quantitative research, we have the hypothesis or null hypothesis. Hypothesis is a prediction about the relationship between or among two or more variables. It thus translates a quantitative research question into a precise prediction of expected outcome. For example, you have written in the statement of the problem, is there a significant relationship between the profile of the respondents and their level of difficulty towards modular distance learning? If we will convert it into the null hypothesis or HO, it will become there is no significant relationship between the profile of the respondents and their level of difficulty towards modular distance learning. Now means negative, thus the use of the word no. The opposite of null hypothesis is research hypothesis or alternative hypothesis. If it is an alternative hypothesis or H1, it will be stated as there is a significant relationship between the profile of the respondents and their level of difficulty towards modular distance learning. Lastly, the definition of terms. In this section, the key terms are defined conceptually and operationally. When we say conceptual, the definition is called from books, dictionaries, electronic sources, such like. On one hand, operational definition refers to how the terms or words are used in the research work. This is provided by the researchers themselves. Terms to be defined are arranged alphabetically and written in paragraph form. That's it for today's lesson. I hope you learned a thing or two from me. If I was able to help you get started with your chapter 1 in quantitative study or in practical research too, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell to keep you posted of our lessons. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, study well. Bye!